Firstly, I am sorry for not actually uploading in so oh long. The two reasons I tend to upload is because I enjoy it, and so you can enjoy it. When one of those doesn't happen, I can rely on the other one to get me through the week. When neither happens, there's no more incentive to make a video that week. Secondly, I also managed to shoot myself with a nail gun. So even though I feel like making a video this week, I can't make a usual video. Hence this narration style that you haven't seen from me before. In saying that, I've been looking into this style of video for a while. I've always enjoyed these types of videos. The theory behind games has always intrigued me quite a bit. And this is the perfect opportunity to test it out. Starting off with one of the videos I've had planned for so damn long. A video about a huge MOBA with a vast array of great characters with a lot of skill expression, a great community, and... Oh wait, that's Dota. Hang on. A MOBA with a bunch of characters that have been shit out for monetary gain. Skins based off of whoever has the biggest titties. Brain dead champions that have consistently had either way too OP releases or way too weak releases and above all major toxicity issues. League of Legends is one of the most popular online multiplayer games in the world. It was released by Riot Games in 2009 and has since accumulated 117 million monthly players. The gameplay premise is the same as any other MOBA. There are two teams, each consisting of five players. The goal of the game is to destroy the enemy team's base, or Nexus in this case. However, it is not uncommon to encounter toxic behavior, as anyone who has played even one multiplayer match can attest to. This ranges from verbal abuse to intentional feeding, or inting, to griefing or trolling. In this video, we will explore the toxicity in League of Legends and its impact on the game and its players, from the peaks of Challenger to the depths of iron. While toxic behavior is not unique to League of Legends, it is much more common than in other online games. According to a study conducted by Riot Games in 2016, 95% of players have reported experiencing toxicity in the game. If you're part of that 5%, by the way, you are so incredibly lucky. As I said before, there are many different forms and many ways for someone to ruin the game for everyone else. Verbal abuse is one of the most common forms. It involves players using offensive language, insults, and otherwise insulting remarks towards someone else. Verbal abuse can have a severe impact on players, particularly those who are new to the game or have low self-esteem. This is why this form is so bad. It's slightly different if it's two challenger players with massive egos having a dick measuring contest, but people do this everywhere. New to the game? Someone in blind pick will flame you? Want to have some fun? Well, someone is going to tear you a new one in Aram. Want a nice competitive match? Good luck having any actual enjoyment in Ranked. There's no ends to it. Riot have recently added a chat restriction, but it does very little in helping. Instead of punishments, everyone for anything said. Called someone a monkey? You get the exact same punishment as someone who dropped a hard R and told someone to kill themselves. I mean that monkey remark seriously. I got chat restricted for two games in particular where I called someone who was toxic all game an ape, and another where I called my ADC, who was stomping the game by the way a monkey, jokingly. Nothing else was toxic, the context of that second one wasn't toxic, but you just can't make fun of monkeys, I guess. Literally, as I'm editing this, I get chat restricted again. Two of the ones I've already been suspended for, the monkey incidents. The third one, please point out the toxicity for me. Me defending my team's yee. The sarcastic comment of me building crit thresh. Me flaming myself, saying I suck a bit of penis. Me saying fucking excitement twice. Maybe asking him why he'd ever walk back into a fight on 10 HP. Apart from that, I genuinely do not know why this counts as verbal abuse. I call my teammates babe, I make jokes in chat, I don't sweat negatively at other players. The worst I do is ask questions or make general comments if someone has made a mistake. Me included. I flame myself more than anyone else for things I do wrong, because that's valid criticism. If I miss a hook in Thresh, die, and then saying that I suck, that is valid and not toxic to anyone else. Honestly, the more I play this game, the more I'm convinced to turn off chat completely. Forget trying to be the nice one on the rift, just turn chat off and let everyone else fester in the toxicity. These chat restrictions are an actual joke.
This involves a player purposely dying to the enemy team to give them an advantage. This behavior is detrimental to the team as it makes it more difficult to win the game, and in most cases, downright impossible. Intentional feeding is often used as a form of revenge or retaliation by players who feel that they have been wronged by their teammates. The problem with this is that usually the person intentional feeding is doing so to punish one of the four teammates they have. So, three random people are caught in the crossfire. That's if there is even any reason. Someone people simply want to demote. And so instead of making a new account, they ruin the games of everyone else in order to stomp in iron. This is the reason I made this video. I just had a game where my Kiana mid went zero quarters with four CS, got pinged once, and decided running it down was the optimal choice. So nine other people had to waste 15 minutes of their lives just waiting for the game to finish, because it was lost about three minutes in. Griefing is similar to intentional feeding, in that they're purposely being a detriment to the team in order to lose. This can include stealing resources from teammates, intentionally blocking them, sabotaging their efforts, not ending the game, picking Yumi top, etc. They might not feed the opponents, but they will do everything in their power to make sure that you won't get fed either. Or at the very least, that you can't do anything with the lead that you may have amassed. Once again, this is usually because two people decide to have it out for each other, and three teammates get screwed over because suddenly 40% of the team have decided not to win the game. My game right before the Kiana game, my Nasus top, for no particular reason, refused to end. We had a chance to end at 30, he didn't. So we ended up continuing. We got Elder, he didn't want to end. We got both mid and bot inhibitors. He went top for a tower. Throughout all this, no one flamed him. Worst we did was ask him to end with us. <laughs> Trolling pretty much a mix of griefing and intentional feeding. Trolling has been around since the dawn of the internet. I try to sneak through the door, man. Can't make it. Can't make it. The shit's stuck. Out of my way, son! Door stuck! A troll just tries to irritate and annoy their teammates. Since it's a mixture of two different types of toxic behavior, it's even worse. Not only are you actively giving your enemies an advantage, you're preventing your team from doing anything about it. At the same time, you're also making the game annoying to be in just by your mere presence, making people not even want to play. However, if you leave a game with a troll like this, you will be banned for leaving the game. Leaving the game is a detriment to the team and community and other bullshit that Riot says. In saying that, anyone who has ever had a Yasuo main on their team will know what it's like to play 4v5. While of course some people have poor connection, a bad PC, or just bad luck or timing, most of the time it's just someone raging and leaving the game. This one isn't as bad as the others, since winning a 4v5 is still practically doable. The lever doesn't give the enemy any gold or XP or anything and doesn't prevent you from playing the game, and although it is a bit annoying it is still playable. As well as in ranked having a loss, mitigated for an AFK is amazing, even if it's only some LP. It's still a problem in League, but it's one of the less problematic ones, and honestly, props to Riot for getting to the bottom of this one and finding some kind of decent solution, albeit not a perfect one. Toxicity in League of Legends can have a severe impact on the player base. It can also make players feel unwelcome and discouraged, leading them to quit the game altogether, as we saw with Video Game Donkey in 2015. I'm done making League of Legends videos. The impact of toxicity on players can be particularly severe for those who are new to the game, since they don't even know what they're doing wrong to anger these people. These players are also more susceptible to negative comments and insults, leading them to feel demoralized and discouraged, which is the opposite of what a game should make you feel. Toxic behavior can also impact a player's performance. It can make it difficult for them to concentrate and focus on the game, leading to poor decision-making and performance. It can also lead to players engaging in toxic behavior themselves as they try to retaliate or defend themselves against their teammates. With mental being such a large part of League of Legends, the impact of one toxic game bleeds into the next and continues for a long time, eventually passing on to someone else. Toxicity in League of Legends can also have a severe impact on the game itself. It can make it difficult for players to work together and communicate effectively, leading to poor teamwork and coordination. This can make it more challenging to win the game and can lead to frustration and demoralization. 
Honestly, I wouldn't mind if League died for at least three years. If a large portion of the community left, the current incentives for Riot would be gone. They would fix the game and the punishment systems they have in place in order to bring people back to the game. I don't think this will happen, but as it stands, there's no reason for anyone who wants to have fun to continue playing this game. It's addicting. It's toxic. It's basically the perfect example of terrible relationship. The trash! Fix the game! It sucks playing the shit! And I'm fucking addicted! So I can't quit! I originally had a whole outro planned, but I've scrapped it. My original point was that it's partially up to the community to fix it. Either focus on ourselves individually, in order to make a change overall, or just stop spreading the game until the problems are fixed. However, screw that. While we definitely can do things to fix it, it shouldn't be entirely up to us. Riot have a very strong game here. It already makes plenty of profit. Stop letting people sign up for new accounts with the same email to stop people being able to set up new smurfs so easily. Put harsher restrictions on AFK's griefers, the bigger problems in the game, and fix the game itself. Stop releasing new champions as OP in order to help them find their niche. Just release them balanced, so not every other champion has to be balanced in order to fit the new champion's meta every two weeks. I understand part of this is just people being upset at nothing. A lot of games have to deal with that. People feel like they've been cheated, they blame the company. But seriously, if everyone is complaining, then there is definitely something wrong. Instead of focusing on making money and bringing new players in, make the current players happy and the rest will come. If your product is awesome, they'll advertise for you. Let me know what you thought of this video. I honestly enjoyed writing the script, collecting the clips, voicing it, and editing it. If you want to see more, let me know in the comments, give me a quick subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed.